a lot of uh, YouTube video or even book talking about queer Muslim, LGBT, let's say Muslim things. What is your opinion on it? <laughs> even someone posted on on Usuli Institute mm -hmm. just now about this. Oh, really? Yeah. In, uh, oh, on, it's on the a group. different one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Same sex marriage. It's so so difficult. Yeah, it is. It is because okay, I I I'll, I mean. Or maybe post for the other opportunity. <laughs> It's not that I I, I am I'm, I'm not like a, a lot of Muslim scholars that that freaks out at the topic or that is um, standing there to condemn. I approach things within a methodological hmm. coherent framework. Yeah. You know, some believe that there is a clear, unequivocal, textual condemnation of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. I don't agree that there is. I, it, it is the Quranic verses on Kalmlut. And not only that, but even there was an acceptance within the Islamic civilization of the naturalness of homosexual desire. Of course, for in, in the prior civilizations, what was, what was often considered a source of fitna were young boys, mm. um, which for our day and age would strike us. But, but now the next question is, is the issue is one is entitled to exercise the sexual desire that Allah has created in them just because it is in them? And my answer is no. Why? In the same way that some people found themselves desiring people of the same sex, there are other people that find themselves whether we like it or not, desiring children. There are some people that find themselves with all types of sexual desires, what we call fetishes. Mm, yeah. and that, you know, so, and some of them are, are very disturbing. You know, there are some people who are only sexually satisfied with by violence. There are some mm. people who are only easy. sexually satisfied if they have sex with a corpse. There, some people are only sexually satisfied in bestiality. The existence of a sexual desire in and of itself doesn't equal a right to exercise. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you found yourself that way in, in, in and of itself doesn't mean that you, it, it, it means that you, you have to be able to practice. Now there is the next question. What right do I see Allah consistently emphasizing? Sexual desire is often a blessing, but it's also often a mahna. It's mm -hmm. a, 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 a plight, a form of test, a rule. But what, what Allah does guarantee to human beings as a right is the right to have a second, is the right to have a habitat. Mm -hmm a habitat, a partnership. Now, that's a different question. That's a separate question. So if someone comes to me and says, the only habitat that I can have is with someone of the same sex, that's a completely separate question. And I, and I, I mean, to, to, to make a, a longer my response to the issue of habitat in a society in, 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 is often culturally contingent. So what I and so I mean to, to, to 
I am willing to seriously rethink the rights of homosexuals within a contemporary understanding, but on the, on, but on the principle of the right to habitat, the right to sakina, not the, not the right to a sexual desire. Because there, there is a huge difference between the two. If I say people have a right to exercise their, their, their sexual desire, then I have to be able to create, to distinguish between a homosexual desire and all the other sexual desires that are, quote unquote, un, you know, out of the orthodox, out of the usual. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and a systematic distinction uh, like that is, but the, but the issue of right to habitat is a separate issue, and that issue deserves to be seriously rethought mm -hmm. and rediscussed. And I, and I think it's also quite different from, you know, if you require, if we live in a society where families marry each other, and then you tell these families you have to accept a homosexual marriage, I think that's very different than a marriage in, in the West where basically it's one individual marrying another, and it's not families that marry each other. Because it is not going, to, it is not necessarily traumatic for a family to be a part of a homosexual marriage, as it would be, for instance, in Indonesia or Egypt, uh, as opposed to a marriage in the United States, where basically couples create their habitat without the intimate involvement of a family. It, it, it has a different takif shari, I mean, and balance of harm and good would be very different. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm very troubled by the idea that if if all the things that we read, and again, and I, and I, and I, and I think that that deserves a very serious vetting, you read a great deal about sexual identity that's produced by Western scholars that are quite often those who write within gay and lesbian studies are themselves gay and lesbian. Yeah. And, but an Talk honest, you, critical yeah. conversation about the relationship between homosexuality and identity doesn't receive an honest vetting because it's still a taboo topic. And, and I, I would like to have a serious conversation about it. I would like to know whether this has to do with sexual desire or with habitat, with sakina, with second. Mm. And until now, because of all the taboos, and you know, if in the West, if you even question the idea of the rights of gay and lesbians, it, it, it's a huge crime. While in a lot of the other world, other parts of the world, the opposite. It's, it's the opposite. And be, these intellectual taboos prevent an honest conversation mm -hmm. in which we can actually ask the tough questions and get honest answers <laughs> from people from, or, and, and how to differentiate between this and someone who says, because I've met people like that, who says, I can never achieve any sexual satisfaction unless it, is, it, unless it involves violence or unless it you know, whatever fetish there is, or someone who says, from the time I was a child, I was always obsessed with feet, and all I care about is a person's feet. You know, there are many ways we can differentiate. We, I mean, we can draw systematic distinctions, perhaps, between a, a foot fetish and homosexuality, but I want these conversations, and these conversations have to take place without the ideological dogma uh, that currently exists. Yeah. Thank you so much. But I think you can definitely say that I mean, people who are, are, you know, either homosexual or however they identify are told that they're evil. No, 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 no. That, that, that is haram. To tell someone, in fact, for me, when someone comes and tells me, I have a sexual desire. I've always found myself with this type of sexual desire. And the mere fact that they resist it 
because they want to be good by Allah makes them a hero, not evil. And there, that that is so to treat homosexuals like they are, mm -hmm. like they're diseased or they're evil or that is just disgusting. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, the human beings. If someone grows up for whatever whatever the reason is, whether it's genetic or non-genetic, you know, something in the way their brains are wired or not, you grow up finding yourself in a certain way. The fact that you can even be honest about it is something to be admired. And Allah is, is perfectly just. If Allah knows that this is the desire I've created in you, if it's true, that homosexual desire comes from Allah and not from anything a human being does, then there is no way that Allah is going to punish that. Allah doesn't punish what Allah does. And, and Allah punishes injustice to other human beings. So if you're all, you, know, you have sexual desire and you rape someone, obviously you're going to... But you know, the tougher question is whether you can engage in, in sex with someone through marriage. So basically, homosexual marriage. And that's the, that's what the thing I was referring to, where then we have to raise a more bigger social question. And a marriage in the U.S. is very different than a marriage in Egypt or Indonesia. And, and because of the nature of what, how do we define a marriage. But it is, should be any imam or Muslim that treats a homosexual as if they're diseased or should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, th th that is... And lastly, can you comment then on ident like creating your identity around I'm gay, I'm queer, I'm this, so that it becomes like, I should come out of the closet and identify myself so it Listen, becomes a public it's, issue. It's sexual desire in the same way that my sexual desires with my spouse is my private business, your sexual desires, even if you are living with a homosexual partner, and let's say that you've married and you've brought in two witnesses, that is your private business. This society loves to make sex a, a public issue and I find that completely against what we were talking about earlier haya, the, the, uh, uh, humility and and um, how do you translate haya? Uh, modesty, modesty. Uh, your sexual preferences are your business privately if you're homosexual in, while at the same time you should not feel that there is anything to be ashamed of in the sense that Allah hasn't cursed you, uh, this is not some type of curse or, 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 or punishment that Allah had placed on you, but at the same time there is no reason to go around announcing it to the world in the same way that any other sexual preference is something that is private. So, for instance, I've met some people who say, I have, an, I have an addiction to pornography. There's no reason to go around telling it and saying it to, to everyone. It's one thing if you talk to your imam because you're trying to get their advice, because there's a reason for it. But to go around building your identity around your sexual preference, yeah. then, then, no, that, that, there, that is a, a form of socializing of the other. And... So when, you know, you watch these um, singing shows and the first thing they say, you know, uh, someone who's coming to sing, they're, they're competing in singing. And the first thing they say is that, oh, when I've come out as gay, how, what does this have to do with your voice? <laughs> I mean, okay, fine. That, that is what, that's your business in your bedroom. I'm interested in your voice. In the same way, if I'm interested in your job as a lawyer, I, my... My first boss, at my, the first legal job I've ever had was a gay man. I actually, and I actually didn't 
when he invited me to dinner, he was living with another man, he invited me to dinner, I went to dinner, and I had dinner, and I met his partner, he was very nice, but I very much appreciated that it was never part of our professional life. Mm -hmm. I mean, his, his sexual identity was as irrelevant as my own sexual identity. There, in the same way that race and ethnicity and all these other things should not enter, sex, uh, sexual identity should not be part of the equation either. Question from the back, uh, the, the previous answer. 